Hello and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. Today's launch is a module tug on board a Taurus C. The module tug is essentially identical to the previously launched nerfed tug, except with a Clampatron Senior docking port to suit station modules and in particular the external tank from the previous EDB shuttle flight. The immediate mission then is to capture that external tank which is currently out of electric charge and unable to maneuver and to dock it with Hoffman Station. A secondary goal is to attempt the recovery of the Taurus C launcher. And so with that here we go off the count. T-15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Taurus C launcher with the module tug to low carbon orbit. A brilliant view of the launcher as it ascends with the VAB in the background, the moon hanging above the, the mountain range to the west here. The module tug is a light payload for a Taurus C launcher at about 33 tons. It still wouldn't be able to fit in the shuttle. Uh, just in physical size, it's too wide for the shuttle, and also the shuttle only has a capacity of about 30 tons. So it wouldn't fit in terms of maximum payload mass on the shuttle either. Launch is proceeding nominally as we pass 10 kilometers here. Despite not being a particularly heavy payload for this launcher, it is heavy enough to cause problems if it wiggles, and it is balancing on its nerve engine, so it's a 1.25 meter engine that the huge bulk of the tug is balancing on, and so many struts had to be used in order to uh, keep it steady, and we'll see how that works. So far it's working quite well, it looks like, as we pass 15 kilometers now, 20 kilometers, looks like 22 kilometers downrange. The Rhino has been used all the way through ascent in order to provide the necessary thrust weight ratio to get this to altitude as quickly as possible so that all the engines are running with their desired efficiency but now at 30 kilometers the main seals are off and it is just the Rhino operating and we have fairing separation and you can see the payload there the module tug bouncing on that very slim engine with the senior docking port on top. Now mounting it the other way around would have been an option, but the EDB wanted to test whether this sort of strutting could keep the payload balanced and keep the payload safe. Here we see there are some wiggling problems, and, and not necessarily with the payload. It seems like the launcher itself seems to be a little bit askew. It tends to want to go to one side, and so that's an issue that the EDB will have to, have to figure out. Uh, it does tend to want to deviate, and that's probably not due to the payload, per se. We'll see how that works out on the way down, as the Taurus C uh, re-enters and attempts recovery. It is nearly a continuous burn to orbit for this launcher, and we'll see that eventually, but here what we see is some of the orientation issues. You'll note that the, the Werner thrusters on the launcher are active as well as the RCS thrusters on the payload also helping to orient the huge bulk of this vehicle. The gimbling on the Rhino does not seem to be adequate nor the SAS modules on each of the mainsail pods. You can see extreme gimbling there to keep it steady. And here you see it making its apoapsis of about 100 kilometers and you can see it already has a substantial periapsis all on a single burn. So that was one continuous burn all the way up to get to 100 by 50. So it still needs to do a burn at apoapsis to fully make orbit. And so that is what it is aiming for here. Lots of thruster firing in order to turn this huge vehicle. As you will see here, the Taurus C brought the payload to 102 by 101 kilometer orbit. Uh, sufficiently circular orbit, though further maneuvers would have to be arranged in order for the module tug to meet up with the external tank from the shuttle. Here we see solar panel extension on the module tug 
and we'll have separation in a moment here. Okay, payload separation and switching to the module tug. The nuclear engine is active and a little burst of thrust moves it away from the Taurus C. Its lights are on and it's on its way. The Taurus C now maneuvers in order to return back to the KSC hopefully, though at least as close as possible. The EDB is still working on its trajectory for return. Uh, the first attempt was quite a ways off. Hopefully this time it will be a little bit closer. The periapsis chosen this time was 22.5 kilometers. Here the thruster is firing again with the brakes out as it begins to enter the atmosphere. 22.5 kilometers will probably be short of the KSC. The EDB is trying to establish a certain range uh, to work with and the hope is this time the Taurus C will end up on land and we will see how it balances there as it uh, now is below 55 kilometers in altitude. with some heating starting up here approaching 50 kilometers in altitude that's 50 now below 45 kilometers in altitude quite a sight in the Kerbin sky there here it's starting across the western ocean now because this is going to be an intentionally steeper descent uh, it will also test the heat tolerances of the vehicle, whether it can have a 22.5 kilometer periapsis like this, or whether that is too much for its heat shielding. And of course, uh, it doesn't actually have uh, heat shields at the bottom, it does have nose cones with high heat tolerance, and then the engine bells themselves. Approaching the coast of the home continent, now 33 kilometers in altitude. Still a phenomenally heavy vehicle and quite a heavy fuel load still because of course the payload was lighter than normal. It looks like it will be landing short and so the goal now is to avoid the mountains. Air brakes remain out in order to try and get it to land as short as possible. And that's quite a trajectory as it uh, descends below 15 kilometers. Verna thruster is firing mightily in order to keep its orientation. Does not seem to have the deviation it had on ascent. So maybe it was the payload that was causing it to deviate like that. Uh, that will have to be taken up in review. Now below 12 kilometers and the uh, forces on it have diminished. It looks like it has survived the heating. And now just attempting to see if it can land safely. Getting ready for parachute deployment here. That is some rough ground down there. Okay, drogue chute deployment. Drogue chute deployment successful seven kilometers first volley of main parachutes deployed successfully five kilometers second volley of main chutes deployed successfully That looks like very, very bad terrain. That is a serious slope. Unfortunately, I don't believe the Taurus C is configured to maneuver away from that right now. It will attempt to slow down. Uh, SAS should be on uh, if there's any chance. It, it could have moved a little bit further to the right in our camera view. It looks like a flatter spot, but uh, that was not done. And SAS is still not on. Now SAS is on, but it's far too late. I don't know if SAS could have held it. Uh, probably doubtful. And it's a uh, 
sort of a slow fall a giant getting wrecked still lots of pieces the EDB will attempt to of course recover those pieces but certainly not the recovery that the that the agency was hoping for yet another disappointment with the Taurus series of launchers but perhaps on flat ground it would have been successful so we'll look forward to that at a later date not entirely clear how many such losses the EDB can sustain before they have to abandon the Taurus concept but uh, here we have the module tug making for its rendezvous with the external tank from the previous shuttle launch nuclear engine doing burns with utmost efficiency it's carrying a heavy mop propellant load which is good because in order to turn around the tug it's going to need that RCS after a mile plane change and then a the second adjustment it got to rendezvous of about one kilometer and here it is matching velocities with the external tank from ETS-8 as you can see there the external tank is quite enormous as you can see there it'll look even more striking as it approaches the station hopefully this time successfully here the module tug is lining up with the docking port on the external tank very cautiously after all there is no control over the external tank and so any knock on it will start it spinning and that would be an unfortunate situation here we go within one meter and it is docked so the tug has captured the external tank and will now attempt to maneuver it towards Hoffman station where it will be docked on the opposite side from the Orion 1 space liner this is the view as it matches velocities with the station really the tug and the external tank make for an interesting spacecraft in their own right and perhaps in the future this sort of combination will be used for interplanetary missions being refueled by mining apparatus on the moon or Minmus for instance and so that is a plan that I expect the EDB will have in the works here we have the approach to the station on the nighttime side of Kerbin. And that's that's an interesting look at the relative size of the thing, though it's somewhat distorted by the fact that the camera is focused on the external tank and the tug. But this is a large piece of the puzzle. The station's lights were on full as the external tank and tug made their approach. Thankfully the external tank and tug were already on the correct side of the station and more or less lined up so there wasn't any need to do any fancy maneuvering which would have been very cumbersome. I should note that the fuel from the tug was shifted into the external tank in order to shift the center of mass for balance to help the thrusters make sure that they aren't adding any unnecessary torque. They were still adding some unnecessary torque but uh, it helped out a little bit as we see here uh, that that's a good view of the comparative size of the things so the Orion 1 space plane is still larger than the external tank but uh, it's a formidable addition to the station itself 33 meters now we have been this close before the previous attempt to attach an external tank to the station has gotten this close so there is no relief from mission control right now tensions are still high 25 meters now slightly off on the alignment constant adjustments being made with the thrusters within 20 meters the lights on the station now making the whole assembly look like a glowing white the sun rising in the background the module lined up with the docking port for its final move forward still trying to make minor adjustments as you can see 
The Verners were quite overpowered at points, giving a little bit more velocity than was strictly necessary at this point, but they were very helpful while making larger changes to trajectory. Just a little bit off, slightly to the right from that view. It had to back away a little bit and realign. But there, there we have it. We have a successful docking of the external tank to the station. And so now it is a major module to the station. We'll see what the EDB does with that. It doesn't afford many opportunities for expansion. It only has one, one large docking port at the other end. Uh, so not many, uh, it would have been better if they had added some small docking ports on the side, I suppose, but but that is a design choice and it looks like looks like this is the way it's going to be for now and so there you have it Hoffman Station with the module tug still docked to it it will uh, release itself once it regains its fuel and that is the whole assembly in orbit around Kerbin alright so thank you for watching this presentation of the launch of the module tug aboard the Taurus C and we hope you'll join us for further EDB launches in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.